welcome to the New Chemist Podcast. We're glad you're listening. Feel free to download this podcast on Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and a variety of other platforms. Here on New Chemist, we discuss chemistry, which simply put is a science of change, as well as careers, community, research, and COVID-19. We're happy you're tuning in. My guest today is my colleague from Georgia Tech, Savni Kalkarni. It is so great to hear from you. Just briefly, I'll inform my audience about you. I met Savni at Georgia Tech where she studied and obtained her bachelor's degree in biomedical engineering. Savni worked at Amniox Medical as a research and development project manager, coordinating clinical trials, creating protocols, and conducting several visits to different sites. She worked as a field clinical engineer at Abbott and currently serves as a mitral clip clinical sales specialist. Savni, thank you again for joining me. Please welcome Savni. Thank you so much for joining me today, Savni. It is good to have you on as a guest. I mean, it's been a while. It has been a while, but you still look well. You still look well. Thank yeah. you. Good to see you too. <laughs> yeah. Um, so as we begin, what have been your longstanding interest in the field of science? So I think, you know, my interest started back in around middle school. So I joined Science Olympiad mainly to build a robot. But then as, you know, we started doing the hands-on, um, I guess the robotics team was full. So they moved me over to anatomy. And then as I started studying the anatomy portion for the Science Olympiad, you know, the exams that you have to get to the final, I realized that, you know, this is very interesting and I wanted to pursue a little bit more on the anatomy side. So I um, started studying more of that. And then in high school, I was part of this biotech class. So we did uh, genetic modification of fruit flies and that really piqued my interest. So I was working in a breast cancer lab for a little bit where we modified some breast cancer, the TKS5 protein. And then that led me to starting at Georgia Tech for biomedical engineering. Mm -hmm. So that really, the robotics honestly initially piqued my interest in science. Okay. Yeah, that's yeah. good. That's good. Yeah. So I see. So tell us, tell me a little bit more about your high school project. You worked on fruit flies. What What led you to work on that project? Was it given to you, or uh, how did you choose that project? And how did yeah? Because all of your, st- your story converges well to you ending up uh, <laughs> as a biomedical engineering major at Georgia Tech. So what What about high school? Can you tell me a little bit more about that? Yeah, yeah. So there, we had two options. There was, you could either do this fruit fly or it was, you know, the Punnett Square project for genetics. Okay. So there was a paper version that you could do where, um, you know, you cut up this circle with different enzymes and then match that, or you could do this genetics thing. So I decided that, you know, I'd much rather work with fruit flies and uh, figure out, you know, look under the microscope, run labs on that, than okay. this paper version where it's not as hands-on. So that led me to doing this fruit fly. And basically we were just mating. So it was like eight days of growing this larva in a test tube and um, they had different growth food mediums. And then um, at eight to 10 days, the fruit Mm -hmm. flies would start hatching. Um, So you had to extract females. So you'd use ether to knock them out and then um, under a microscope, check all the fruit flies separating male from female Mm -hmm. and then leave the females for three days in a separate test tube. And then for every three females, put one male fruit fly in and then they would mate. And then once their larvae were you know, laid again, we would uh, transfer the larvae into a different test tube. Those would hatch and then we'd under a microscope check their eyes. So it was to see the red eye versus white eye trait in the fruit mm-hmm. flies. So you know, we did this for like three generations. I think everyone has done this at some point. And yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. There's some from the Gastas use a lot. Fruit flies are used a lot. Yep, they yes. use So, um, how do you maintain a view of the bigger picture in your career and in your life in general? Like in this pandemic, a lot of people mm-hmm. have been challenged. Um, yeah. A lot of people have had to work from home. So perspectives and paradigms have had to change. So how do you maintain a view of the bigger picture? So I think for me, it's a lot easier to maintain a view of the bigger picture by just setting small goals. So, you know, every every Sunday I kind of sit down and list out, you know, things I want to accomplish for the week, like smaller goals. And then, um, you know, working towards achieving the smaller goals helps you know, get to the one or two bigger goals that I've set for the year. Mm-hmm. And so that's just the bigger picture that I have is, you know, they're written down somewhere. But then every day, the smaller stepping stones are what I'm working towards. Especially mm-hmm. during this pandemic, it's been important to 
you know, it's so easy when you're working from home to have so many different tasks that you don't, you just don't feel like doing. Mm -hmm. So every day, you know, setting like, this is the three things I want to do for each day of the week to help me accomplish my goals. Mm -hmm. That's been very helpful for me. Yeah, that's good. So noting things down, writing it down, breaking it down into smaller pieces. I read that a lot from a lot of different people because yeah. you know, if you think about it, if you think of how big the task is, it may be overwhelming. Yes, <laughs> it yes. It can be overwhelming. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, like, like even when it comes to publications or even when it comes mm. to experiments, like if you think about what's the end goal, that could be overwhelming. But if you think yes. about it as to what do I need to do today? Or what do I know, need to do for this hour? Do you uh -huh. make it more yes. specific? What do yes. I need to do for this hour? Then I can proceed forward with the small goal. Yeah, yeah. it becomes more achievable and realistic. Yeah, and I love lists too, you know? Yeah, me too. Me too. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think that must be a common trend for people who pass to Georgia Tech. Yes. So, <laughs> so how have you been adaptive and creative in the field of science? So you know, I think- work honestly, at Abbott, so tell me a little bit more about that. Yeah, so I, um, at Georgia Tech, I did a couple of internships that were uh, a little bit more clinical research focused. So uh, one of them, I guess my main one, I was at a company that did um, amniotic membrane tissue. And um, I was on the clinical trial side. So I was uh, writing protocols for retrospective studies uh, all across the United States. And then um, basically going on doing site follow-up visits, making sure that all the data was being collected appropriately. And then later me and the team would get together and then analyze the data. And then eventually it would get published by the physicians that had, you know, done the study. So that was interesting for me. So I picked, you know, the parts of that job that I really enjoyed. And then when I was applying for jobs out of Georgia Tech, I was looking for something that would, you know, loop in those interests from the clinical research internship that I had. Uh -huh. So that led me into a field clinical engineering role with Abbott. So okay. there was a team of initially eight of us, and then it got expanded to 12, um, all put at different sites across the country. And we were collecting data on um, like cardiac catheterization labs. Okay. So there's, you know, the stenting procedures that they do. Um, we were collecting data on their workflow for the stents and um, analyzing that data, presenting it to them. And basically we wanted to establish a set workflow and just check how the data improves based on the physician's adherence to the workflow. So through that, I was, you know, in a hospital every day and there's so many cases going on in the cath lab that are outside of my scope. And what I tried to do was just, you know, be open to other opportunities to learn. Yeah. So, you know, the physicians I worked with are involved in research for multiple trials. And uh, I would just ask them, hey, you have a case coming up this afternoon that seems pretty interesting, can I join? So they would invite me in and then I was able to learn a lot from them. They've been a very supportive team, so. That's good. I, yeah. You know, you know, I've heard it almost appears as if, or it seems as if, or another way you could put that is, um, you know, I've heard people, dis I was listening to a video from the Harvard Business Review, and they were mm -hmm. talking about disrupting yourself, like jumping yes. from one S-curve to the next. Yes. And I can see how what you're doing is facilitating that, because yes. as you open yourself up to new opportunities and you open yourself up to be like, um, I sort of saw this interesting case. Can I listen? Can I follow? Can I learn? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you are learning more at the same yes. time as you are doing your job that you're responsible for. That's good. That's a good. It's approach. great because you know it's, you learn how much you don't know, yeah. <laughs> and so then you can always you know I would stand in the back of these cases just taking notes, and then I would go home and like look up. Oh, what did I see today? What did I not understand? Which is a lot, and then I learn more doing that. So. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Yeah. Yeah, it's important to be aware or at least try to be aware of what you do not know. That's yes. Critical. Yes. Because yeah, no one knows everything. Um, exactly. And then two, uh, being humble enough to learn and mm -hmm. keep learning. Yeah, that's good. So how have you sort of found the right environment for you to thrive scientifically and intellectually? So you are at a good school, Georgia Tech. Mm -hmm. good yes. You are now currently working at a very good clinical company or pharmaceutical yeah. company, clinical scientific company, Abbott. Um, how did you find these right environments? How did you find them? A lot of it was networking. So I was yeah. very fortunate in that, you know, I was placed in um, a hospital in Phoenix for my first job where I was doing clinical research. And my entire team was incredibly supportive of you know, me wanting to learn more. And all the physicians that I worked with, you know, they were very open to teaching. 
So I just asked questions about everything. And then uh, through that, I actually was able to get into some of the cases for the current job that I have with MitraClip. So I asked, you know, one of the physicians that I worked with for research, if I could just come in on a Friday to, you know, just observe some of his cases. And he was like, yeah, yeah, of course, I have med students too. So I'll be explaining a lot. And then uh, I networked with the, the MitraClip team and then started going into more of their cases on days where I had time. And then, you know, when I had some downtime, I would just research more about the procedure. And, um, you know, there's a lot of waiting in between cases in the hospital. Like you have at least 30 minutes for turnover. So that was the prime time for me to just research some other, uh, you know, things that I don't understand. And that actually really helped me find this environment. That's good. That's yeah. good. So networking was the key thing that helped you find the environment. Yes, networking was definitely the key. Yeah, that's good. So now other people can know that as well. So what have been your most, what would you say have been some of the most impactful and effective ideas that you've worked on to date on your project? What would have been the most effective ideas or effective strategies or what complemented to your project working well? When it didn't work well, what did you do to fix it? How, what was effective? What was impactful? So I think there's a couple of things that are pretty effective in my current role. And I think just in general too, you know, been nearing college, moving on. And I think it's it's so easy to get, you know, tunnel vision when every day you're doing the same thing and it's very easy to just get stuck in that. And, you know, sometimes you're gonna have you know, a more complex procedure or um, just a different anatomy of the heart. And then it's important to think outside of the box. So what I would do is just uh, every idea that I have, you know, even if it sounds a little too ridiculous or too crazy, I would write it down. And then, you know, every month, it's a great way to just, you know, put it out there, right? Mm -hmm. And then if it, you know, if it doesn't make sense, it doesn't make sense, but at least you tried. And then sometimes the crazy ideas actually do end up working and mm -hmm. they work the best. So that's what oh, I've been yeah. really trying to do is just, get creative with different things, you know, like list 10 ideas. Some of them are going to be, you know, straightforward, the ones that you do every day. And then the ones that are outside of the box, those are the ones where they get you actually thinking a little bit more creatively. Mm -hmm. I completely agree. Being creative, failing forward, yes. networking, those are important, very important. And asking um, questions too, right? Like yes, it's I completely so agree. important. Yeah, because you know, I, I'll be honest with you, when I take notes, I used yeah. to take notes in terms of writing facts and writing down mm -hmm. vocabulary words, and that has its place. Yes. However, I've gotten to a point where I, I try to write down the questions. Mm -hmm. what, what are the questions that my professor is trying to elicit, or he's yes. trying to get me to think about as he's teaching me in the class? Yes, because, yeah. Because, because this is how I see it. If I can get the right question, then the answer is a cinch. Mm -hmm. You just have yes. to go to the resource, go to the reference, go to the material. So right. I'm noting down questions and also that facilitates me when it comes to studying again. So I know mm -hmm. how to make my flashcards quickly, you know? Right, yeah. right. Yeah. It's about the bigger picture always. Yeah, the bigger picture, <laughs> bigger picture. So how do you maintain a balanced life given all your responsibilities and accomplishments? Would you say you're balanced or are you trying to achieve a sense of balance or do you have a lot of priorities that you work through as you go throughout your day? How yeah, do you so phrase I it? The list is most important for me, I think for balance too. It's just, you know, a list of things that like we keep a running list on our team. So, you know, I have my own list of, you know, this is things that I need to do. And then um, that helps me kind of plan my week out. So I'll, you know, in a planner kind of plan out like a lot of time slots. And then obviously, you know, the cases are first priority. So that gets listed. And then other time I have other, you know, like checklist items that I need to accomplish for work. And then outside of that, I just try to, you know, definitely take time for myself as well. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I try to work out about four or five times a week whenever I have time. Or, you know, lately I've been doing, going for walks at night and that's been great. <laughs> Join you know, the club. Join so the club. Nice. <laughs> I love my walks. I love my evening walks. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> the I weather's love my... nice. <laughs> Pardon me? The weather's all nice at night. You know, I know, like... right? It's all quiet and stuff and you can see. All like, the lights. Yeah, I know, right? It's almost like one of the movie scenes and that. Yes. Thing. Anyway, yeah, man, that's, 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 that's been I'm really right there great. With you. That's yeah. been really great for you know just mental clarity a little bit, and then you know I have that mindfulness app, so mm. you know like just a couple of minutes of like the meditation that helps too. Yeah, head that space, I know my coworker head got me onto that. He's been doing more meditating, so it's, mm -hmm. yeah, I should try this. It's good, so. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I can really agree. You know, I'm yeah. a person of faith, so yeah, meditation yeah. is important too. Very important. Yes, yes. Yeah. So, how have you been so successful as a student in the field? Like, what helped you get to Georgia Tech? What helped you do well at Georgia Tech? How did you end up getting a good job? You mentioned networking, but 
what do you think has been a key factor in your success to date? I think, you know, it's one, it's always, you know, having the desire to learn more. Like, I'm never content with what I know. Like, there's always something that I don't know. Like, like you said earlier, no one knows everything. So just always seek to learn more and take any opportunity that you can to learn and grow more. And then, um, you know, even in Georgia Tech, like there's so much that they threw at us every day. Oh, yeah. That, yeah, 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 yeah. No idea. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, I think it's very important to, you know, try to learn more, but also like ask for help when you need it. Mm-hmm. You know, like you're going to like put the ego aside. You know, there's no ego. Like sometimes it's okay to ask questions. Like, you know, I don't understand this. And if, you know, you're talking to people that have been in the field for so long that it's just commonplace for them. So obviously, like, they know this, they'll just, you know, skim past it if you don't stop them to ask for help. So that's been, you know, asking for help when I need it and just trying to learn more every time, like every chance that I get. Yeah, let the ego go, eh? Yes. (laughs) Let the ego go. Yeah, exactly. I completely agree with you on that. Um, And, you know, I, I would say having a desire to learn Mm-hmm. And understanding that it's not it's okay to not know everything i think those are very helpful to success so yeah. how have you maintained vision and teamwork in your environment you obviously work in a very collaborative space so yes. how do you keep sight of the big goals the big questions important ideas and how are you able to work well as a team member in your environment yeah. So I think I've been very fortunate that, you know, after leaving Georgia Tech, I've been a part of two really great teams. So my first job as the field clinical engineer, we had, um, like we were a dispersed team. So, you know, it wasn't, we weren't seeing each other all the time because we were all remote, like at, you know, 12 different hospitals. But um, we still had, you know, weekly calls to just go over objectives and goals and just everyone presented, you know, what had happened during the week and any breakthroughs that they had. And then we'd have monthly just idea sharings so um you know someone tried something cool at the cleveland clinic so they would share it with the rest of us and then you know we would go try that if we were having similar issues and then in my current role now i'm very lucky to have a team that's uh we're very close and we work very well together we're all based out in phoenix together so you know we try to meet once we meet more than like three times a week because we're covering cases together Mm. but we'll start the week off by you know just kind of just a brief five minute discussion like this is what we have planned for the week. This is what we're trying to accomplish and this is how it's gonna help us for the month. We'll have monthly calls where we discuss like, all right, this is our monthly goal for the quarter. And then that's, how does that quarter, you know, the goals overlay for the year. And then it just, you know, we'll have weekly just touch touch base meetings that, you know, this is what we did that's working. This is what we did that's not working. This is where we need to improve as a team. And that's been really helpful for me. Yeah, I completely agree. Because, you know, I was listening to a talk on system mm. dynamics from a professor yeah. at MIT. And, you know, they talked about the open loop model in mm-hmm. which you are con- constantly refining your your input, constantly refining your progress. Yeah, so that's good. Yes. So why did you choose biomedical engineering as a field to major in? So, like I mentioned earlier, when I was younger, I was interested in, like, the robotics. And then I became interested in anatomy. And, you know, when I applied to Georgia Tech for biomedical engineering, I thought that's the best way to combine the two, you know, like anatomy and robotics, biomedical engineering, there you go. Mm -hmm. So I started because of that. And then as, um, you know, like as I progressed through the curriculum, like around sophomore year, I realized that, you know, like originally I was pre-med and then I realized that that was not the right career path for me. So I liked the engineering side a lot. So I realized that this is the best way to make an impact without having to go to med school is to do biomedical engineering. There's so much innovation happening in our field that, you know, you can make an impact every day in a different sector of the field. And that was very appealing to me. That's good. That's very good. So do you have any advice to those wanting to pursue the field you're currently working in? Yeah, I think my main advice, so I remember, you know, sophomore year after uh, BMED 2210 class, um, you know, I'd come back from class and they told us that, yeah, um, to be successful in biomedical engineering, you need to get a master's degree and then maybe a PhD or become a doctor. And I'd called my parents that night and I was like, I don't want to do this. Like, maybe this isn't right for me. And, you know, my parents just told me that, hey, like, if are you interested in biomedical engineering? Is this something that you love? And I said, yeah, it is. So they said, don't let what other people tell you influence what you're doing with your life. Like, Mm -hmm. there'll be a way if you find a way. 
Mm -hmm. So I think that was a piece of advice that I would give to anyone that's trying to pursue, you know, whatever they want to, um, if, you know, if it's biomedical engineering, just don't listen to other people. If you're passionate about it, you'll find a way and you'll find whatever works for you. Yeah, I completely agree. It's important to have the right, uh, I phrase, the, the right opinions, the right yes. advice in your air, you know, especially when you're making critical career decisions. Very yes. important. Yeah. yeah. And you have to know what to listen to and what not to listen to. Exactly, because there's a lot of things floating around that, you know, you shouldn't listen to that. <laughs> yeah, I completely agree. I completely yeah. agree. So what has been some of the most beneficial advice you have received? What you say was still replaying in your mind from parents or advisors or what, what else has been beneficial to you, even, even from professors? Yeah, so I've, I've been very fortunate in the current team that I'm with right now. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I've found two really great mentors, um, one being my boss and the other being my coworker. So they give me they give me a lot of good advice, but two of the pieces that have really stuck is uh, you know, my coworker told me he tells me this frequently that you know just be you. There's only one Sabni out there, so just be that one Sabni. Mm -hmm. Like don't try to be anyone else. Just be yourself, and yeah, yeah. you know that's that's key. And then my boss frequently tells me like to stay grounded. You know, don't get too high, don't get too low. Just stay in the middle at all times, and mm -hmm. just stay grounded. Yeah, I completely agree. Have your, your, even if your head is in the clouds, have your feet on the ground. Exactly, yes. Yeah. 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 Never get too overconfident, but yeah. believe in yourself. Yeah, see, for me, I, the thing is, my faith helps me process a lot of things. In mm -hmm. the, um, having a faith perspective allows you to keep perspective on your circumstance. Yes. That's, that's what I found in my personal life. Especially when you have some success or you have some failure, you're able to mm -hmm. put it in the... Per, the appropriate category or the appropriate light so it doesn't like mm -hmm. make you too high or make you too low but yeah so man COVID too. pardon me especially now with covid too it's so I important know, right? to keep yeah. that perspective yeah covid has brought a lot of challenges but you know the interesting thing so covid yeah. has i think allowed us as a people or lot, especially mm -hmm. I, I speak for people i've interacted with in the bahamas they have allowed mm -hmm. us um to you know show or develop a sense of resilience yes yeah absolutely yeah we, and also creativity a lot of creativity was spurred in this pandemic with a this telehealth of, telemedicine all of that is creativity. Right. yeah <laughs> and yeah it's just really really interesting but thank you so much Tommy, for joining me today it was good to have you on as a guest thank you so much thanks for listening we're glad you were able to tune into this podcast once again, this is The New Chemist, where we discuss chemistry, which simply put is the science of change, as well as the other sciences, careers, community, research, and COVID-19. Thanks again for listening. Note, the views on this podcast represent those of my guests and I. Thanks for listening. We're glad you were able to tune into this podcast. Once again, this is The New Chemist, where we discuss chemistry, which simply put is the science of change, as well as the other sciences, careers, community, research, and COVID-19. Thanks again for listening. Note, the views on this podcast represent those of my guests and I.